Welcome to the Five Heart Podcast. This is John Johnston, founder of CornNation.com. And I am not here with Greg this week as he's still out. I am not here with Todd this week as he's a wiener. I am joined by Beth, our incredible volleyball writer who has massive amounts of volleyball experience and has massive amounts of volleyball interest. I'm also joined by Mike. Husker Mike, and he's going to probably talk mostly about football. But first, the big news that you both can respond to. The big news was that Prince Harry and Prince William will not walk side by side at Prince Philip's funeral. What do you guys think of that? Who's (laughs) Prince Philip? (laughs) is that Prince? Is that did Prince Amukamara change his uh, change his name? It's, that's the old guy, the the Queen's husband, for God's sake, the Duke of something, whatever. You don't pay attention <laughs> to this stuff. Why should I? We we revolted from those people, what, two hundred fifty years ago. Yeah, what do we, we care do. about them? What do we care about them? <laughs> They're the royal family. Beth, do you, do you have any comment on this absolute well, huge story out of the England, whatever? But the two princes you listed, those are brothers, right? Yes. Well, that just sounds like a spat. You know, that's like what siblings do. They're doing what siblings do. And that's exactly a fight I would settle with my kids and talk to them about playing nicely and respecting each other and their space and I mean they're just doing what siblings do regardless of if it's like a world event or you know a transformer you know when one of my uh, best friend's mothers uh, when I was growing up was an English woman she was like an army bride uh, and when they had the royal wedding years ago, I think it was Princess Diana's royal wedding, uh, I was at her house, and I, I made some disparaging comments about the royal family, and I said things about, like, such as you guys are kind of alluding to, why do we give a single shit what the royal family is doing? Why, did, why is there even a royal family? Who the hell cares about these people? And she basically slapped the shit out of me. I mean, she just made it very clear that when I was in her house that I would never say another disparaging word about the royal family as long as uh, she was around. So I want you to know that uh, I don't give a single damn shit about this stuff. But, uh, you know, that was a big headline. I mean, think about that. They won't walk side by side, and they thought that was worthy of news. So obviously somebody pays attention in this country to the British royals. There is other big news going on that you guys might care about. Uh, Should we start with volleyball or should we go with the NCAA? Well, God, okay, well, let's go to volleyball. What's going on? That's the the one thing that's going right in Nebraska athletics right now. (laughs) So Beth, talk to us about volleyball. So volleyball was a little different this year. Um, 48 teams started in the tournament. The tournament started yesterday. And so uh, today is the second round of the tournament. And in about two hours, there'll be 16 teams left. There's a couple things happening right now. So Nebraska played today and they beat Texas State in three sets and pretty easily. They were, you know, clearly better than them. And Nebraska hadn't played for 19 days because they played at University of Michigan for their last, their last road match. And then they were supposed to come home and host Penn State, but COVID related something and that match was canceled. So they last played March 26th until today. So um, everybody played that we expected to play um, and looked and looked good. You know, we came out Coach Cook commented afterwards he thought we looked rusty, but, you know, from my eye, everybody looked really good. We did the important stuff. You know, we passed the ball well, we blocked well, we didn't make ball handling errors. So um, Nebraska leaves uh, today with a win over Texas 
state. And then we go into, I got corrected on a couple uh, terms today. So sweet 16, regional semifinals, third round of the tournament, whatever you want to call it. We go into that on Sunday and we play Baylor. So that will get some fans fired up. Okay. How, how far are we expected to go? I mean, this, this put it this way. I mean, Laura Stevens, uh, Lexi Sun, Jazz Sweet, uh, Kathy, the new Hawaiian girl, yeah. Nicklin. Well, how do you pronounce her last name? Hames. Hames? Nicklin Hames. Yeah, she's right there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm I, why do I get the impression that there's not as much expected of them? Hmm. They're the five seed in the tournament. Uh, they they can they can you know they are not the favorite to win. Obviously, the number one team. Last time we talked a lot about Wisconsin, and they're they're still the best team in the country. Um, the number two seed is Kentucky. I, I don't think they're going to win, so you can kind of you know rate them. They're very good, but I I think Nebraska could beat them. Number two team is Minnesota. Tech, um, split with Nebraska in their regular season or is Texas. So we'll get to see them in Baylor. So Nebraska's in the hunt. Yeah. They can win. They have to be upset in the way we're seated, Texas, and then meet Wisconsin in the semifinals. And then, you know, meet whoever from that other side. Probably Minnesota will come through that other side. Maybe it'll be pretty maybe Kentucky, but yeah, I, I'd call them the third favorite to win the title, fourth. Okay, is Kentucky that good? No. <laughs> got... Why do they get ranked SC. high? SEC, uh, SEC, SEC. Yeah, and the SEC, you know, they have, they have Kentucky, Florida, and they have Missouri in the tournament. I think that's it. And those, they're all a really good showing. Missouri just got eliminated today, but um, Florida will be against Ohio State on Sunday, and they're a really good team. But so they won the SEC and won it pretty convincingly, split with Florida, but they don't play a lot of tough teams. And I think we see year after year that play really tough teams and have to be up to that caliber both get better over the course of the season because they're playing those tough teams. And I think they're just, they're attracting a number of players that want to compete in these premier conferences. The SEC is a great conference for a lot of sports, including volleyball, but it's not the conference for volleyball. So if you get a chance to go to any of the big 10 schools, you're going to play in the best arenas. You're going to play for some of the best coaches and you're always going to play against the best no slouches in the big time, maybe a couple. So I think we're attracting better players year in out for um, the big 10. Kentucky's got the best setter in the country. Arguably. Her name's Madison Lilly. She's set for you know, a couple of different levels of the national team. And they've got a sisters, the Skinner sisters who are super talented, but um, I, you know, I think Kentucky is going to meet up against find them here. I think they're not going to make it out of their region, to be honest. I don't think they're that talented. But all the Big Ten teams are still alive. There's six of them. In the um, I already listed Wisconsin, Minnesota, Nebraska's the five seed, Ohio State, Purdue, and Penn State are all in the tournament, and everybody's still alive. Penn State plays yet tonight against North Carolina A&T. So Ohio State kind of they had kind of a dream season for them, didn't they? They did. Yeah, they have a um, coach and they have a couple really talented freshmen. Um, their right side hitter, her name's Emily Landon, and she's again played for some of our national level teams, and she's phenomenal. Um, she was the freshman of the year in the Big Ten, and that was over some other super talented freshmen. Um, Taylor Landfair from Minnesota is really talented. The setter from Minnesota is really talented. But Emily Landant was key to Ohio State's success. And but she's also the big hitter. She gets 40 swings a match, which is a lot of swings. You know, Nebraska, what they try to do is spread it out. Lexi Sun's a great hitter, but she's a hitter because 
she's not getting every set. Lauren's different a great hitter because she's not getting every set. You're spreading it out. You're surprising the team. You're not just overpowering them. Like some of these hitters, when we play Baylor on Sunday, Yasiana Presley, who gets 60 sets a match, and she just flies through the air, hits all kinds of shots. You know the ball's coming to her. The challenge is stopping her. You don't always know the ball's going to Stiverins or Sun or Cubic. You you are somewhat surprised of where Haim sets to. That's strategy. And then they also are talented enough to get the kill compared to a Presley who she's getting the ball. We'll just publicize it, put it on a billboard. Now try to stop her. And usually people can't. On the other hand, if you know where it's coming from, you know where to block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, you know, uses your hands. She hits off of them. She abuses you on the block. So, yeah, you, you set up three blockers in front of her and you try to have perfect form so she doesn't use your block against you. But she usually, she, she beats teams mostly single-handed. Baylor, Baylor also has... Um, a six six on your right side from the Netherlands, and she's really talented. So the what Coach Cook said today, and what the key is to beating Baylor is just don't let anybody else besides press. She can get her kills. She'll have she'll have 15, 17 kills. But if somebody else is getting somewhere in the it's now you're in trouble. It's it's not enough to just have the one, but if you get two or three of them working against us, now you're in trouble. So They'll try to shut down everybody else and minimize Presley on Sunday. Um, How do you abuse somebody in a block? I well, mean, you said that. You, she she will abuse your block or something like that. How do you do it? Can you, what do you just mash the ball in their face instead of their hands? I don't get it. You can. Um, when the hitter goes up there, if, if the hands are flat to the net, you can hit off of them and then they don't sort of defensive digging situation they go off the camera person probably you so when those balls fly at you that block got abused so the hitters are going to look at the hands and if the hands are not well they're not kind of cupping the ball and making it go back in your face then they can hit off your hand rather than hitting it down on the floor on your side of the court um, they can make a decision that fast they see the hands. I mean, I wasn't a hitter. I was a starter and a defender, but yeah, hitters see the hands. They see, you know, they'll see a hole in a block that's six inches big. They get the ball through it. That's, that's a kill. So you talk about a hitter having vision that they're saying she can see what's in front of her, both the hands, the hole in the block, the space between two blockers and where the defense is four people behind the two blockers. They they can see it all. That's what the really good ones can do. <sighs> wow. Okay. I just honestly thought they jumped up in the air and hit the ball, kind of. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not that well, that's good. what you and <laughs> that's what you and I try to do. Attempt when we embarrass ourselves upon five ball courts, but <laughs> I suppose I, I some the of thing, them do. I, you know, I the. The last podcast we did, I talked about being on a college football sideline and and that you're always shocked by how fast the players are. And that's why photographers get run over on the sideline. It's not just that you're looking down a lens and you're, you it distorts your vision, but you're always surprised that all of a sudden this guy that's 15 yards away is on top of you coming out of bounds. How fast he got there. So, you know, I also shot volleyball and they're moving all the time. That sport is so fast. Um, I, and, you know, and then baseball, when somebody's pitching, I think Swellenbach got uh, timed at 97 mile an hour fastball or something this past week. And I, I have no idea how this works. You know, I, I you know, my kids abuse me because they're like, you're old and slow. And you know, they weren't around when I was young and slow, so I guess. What else do we know about volleyball? Are you, are you over the fact that uh, it's a 48-team tournament and that they had weren't going to have locker rooms? And, and what else happened? They weren't going to broadcast um, the first 
rounds of the tournament. They were going to have a live stream, but no announcer. So it was much more like a high school club tournament than a, a championship. So yeah, I, I had to let go of it because I enjoy the volleyball now. I mean, this is this is the Christmas of the best year of time of the year for volleyball when the champion. Yeah, I, I was fired up though, because, you know, it's just epidemic of a larger thing. If it was just about, they need somewhere to change. It's just about, it wasn't important enough to plan it and prepare it and get resources in for it. And so they didn't. And people started yelling about it. And, you know, the yelling is, is I'm over that. Let's watch some quality volleyball. Focus on the players who have put in all this work are, 150% to win the championship and, and just enjoy it. I had to let it go. Just watch. We'll probably get blocked on YouTube just because of that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they are we'll get a vicious. copyright strike. Oh my oh, God, shit. they're vicious about that. Honestly, I was told by somebody, you can't sing the songs either, John. Don't do that. Oh. Anyway. No, I, I, I don't know if it's that bad, but I know that uh, their content ID system is really well, put it this way. I think it was Greg stuffed a 10 second blip from a, a popular song in one and I got a notice on it. So with, literally within 30 minutes of upload. I don't so, think it's, I don't think we, I think it's okay to sing it, but I think that was probably in your case, it's just more because you're probably like me who can't sing at all. So, <laughs> so nobody wants to hear that. That is, I, I can, okay, well, let's move on. Uh, all right. So you're you're way too forgiving about the whole the whole mess of. Well, what happened I mean, I don't think I'm over it completely, but I am going to move on and enjoy the season and the tournament. I do think there's a you know there's a bigger picture to what can we what can we do with this? Is there another administrative organization that would like to oversee sports? Are there some coaches that are willing to stick their neck out there and say, yeah, this isn't working anymore? I don't know how that works, you know, revolution of NCAA. Um, but I think I said like in one of the articles, if it's if it's not working, if it's not the same values that the players are and the coaches and the fans are all speaking, then this isn't the organization that should represent these teams or these players. That there, there's somebody else out there that would value you know, if it's women's sports, if it's a specific sport and value or in that NCAA organization, then let's find somebody that, that does and move there. It's not that simple. I know, but. You know what the problem is? The, the, the problem is the people that really run that organization are the people who run universities. Yeah. And they are very excellent at, at, at a management technique that is a very valid management technique, uh, it's it's called it's a two prong approach to people handling people. Avoid the people you can't placate and placate the people you can't avoid. And it's a, and in most of the time when the NCAA is doing stuff, what they're doing is placating people they can't avoid. You know they have this protest going on for the. Uh, NCAA men's basketball tournament and those guys demanded that they meet with Mark Emmert. Okay, so he did. What good did that do? It didn't do anything. They got to talk to him. That's what he does for a living. He doesn't actually do anything. I don't know. The women's, so I, uh, Remember the women's players though, at least got them to you know, get a few more weights in their weight room down in San Antonio. That's where you placate the people you can't avoid. <laughs> you avoided, what they did was they avoided doing anything for the NCAA wall, vo, women's volleyball tournament until they couldn't avoid it anymore. You know, because somebody tweeted stuff and everybody else picked up on it. And then basically, you know, I, I, and then they, the problem with the NCAA is they're always going to act like, well, we didn't, we didn't really do anything wrong. It's kind of like back when they canceled football and Rutgers president said, we were surprised at the backlash. No, no, you weren't. That's bullshit. You're a politician. It's just pure bullshit when you say stuff like that. 
Because if you were surprised at the backlash, I can understand we can wash it off, but because it was Rutgers, but well, Rutgers, Rutgers was probably surprised by the backlash. <laughs> Kevin Warren might have said that too, and I, I anyway. That is the first time I've said his name in a while. Okay, what else have we got? We did we got any more about volleyball? Well, I just want to say the Huskers are looking good. You know, four of the girls were named to the all regional team, which puts them up for all Americans. Nicklin Hames, Maddie Kubik, Lexi Sun, and Lauren Stiverns are all regional team. And then they could be all Americans too. And um, yeah, the team's just, it's looking solid. There was a little blurb tonight though in Coach's post game interview. Um, he didn't mention it, but then Maddie Cubitt came in and she was interviewed and just asked about Lauren Stiverns didn't play the third set. And I thought she wasn't playing because, you know, got to get Kelly Schwartzenbach in there, get her some NCAA experience for this year and get her legs moving. Um, but Maddie said, well, with Lauren's injury, we were, we knew she might not play all the third sets. So I could not see anything wrong. Yeah, I felt bad for Cubitt. The, oh, I don't think Coach wanted everybody to know that, Maddie, but um, I think she's going to be fine. She played beautifully, amazingly the first two sets, but that's something to watch is Lauren Stiverton's injury, whatever it is that kept her out in the third set, because they could. They could rest her and right. whatever that was and win. It was more challenging the third set, but something to watch against Baylor, which it will be a long match that will go four or five sets. Nobody's going to win against Nebraska and Baylor in three sets. That's, that's a four. Who, uh, who are our seniors? Lexi Sun, Lauren Stiverens, and Jazz Sweet. Okay. Oh, uh, Haley Dinsberger. She plays in the back row. Right. So pretty much two of the, the offense. Yeah, yeah, we'll lose two big players this year. If they go, um, Coach Cook keeps saying they have not talked about whether they would stay for their free year or return. Um, I think both of them could get professional contracts, so and maybe have a chance to play with the Olympics. I don't know. I, that's a little long shot for both of them, in my opinion. Um, so I'd be surprised if either of them came back probably the same with Jazz and Haley, but Coach Cook keeps saying he has not had the conversations with them yet, and they'll just wait until the season's over, and I would have to. Yeah, let's let's be ends. honest. Both of, those, both of those women could go off and be models. Also true, yes. Yeah, I, especially Lexi's son. I mean, I follow, I still follow uh, Kelsey Robinson on Instagram, mm -hmm. and, and she is, what, playing in China and she also could well she probably has the influencer type income coming in from social media so yeah they're going to have offers after this so i'll be surprised if either of them come back so yeah we'll have some holes to fill next year um you had a lot of transfers in the off season last year so you know i think coach cook will get plenty of recruits he's got the next year's class on the bench right now you know the girls in the gray sweatshirts or whatever not playing their next year's class, so they're practicing, but they can't play yet. So they're talented. Oh, you said the magic word. Transfer. You said the segue word. You said transfer. Oh. And that's the news. That was the big news today. I forgot about it and went completely with the Prince Harry Henry <laughs> Royal Fart family. And But the real big news today was that the NCAA approved a one-time transfer rule. Now, when I first heard this, I thought that was for this year only, but it, it is not for this year only. Have you guys read about this at all? I, I haven't read the details in, in depth, but, you know, my understanding is that th this is this is the way it's this is the way the world's going to be. It's just like everything else you do nowadays. You know, if you have a job that you don't like, you go find another job. You get a, you know, if you weren't a, if you weren't an athlete and you went to a school and it wasn't working out for you, you would drop out and you'd go find another school. You know, so that it's just, you know, the idea, 
the idea that you're you'd be that uh, you're somehow stuck at a school for four years the school can cut you but you can't but you're stuck with them it's kind of a uh 19th century mentality and so it's uh the problem is Mike, the... what about commitment these <laughs> kids don't know anything about commitment well, what have you made a commitment to the school and now you're just bouncing on it like a quitter and and the coaches when they uh pack up and get a better job offer in two or three years they're in control. That's a different thing altogether. They go, they go, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, they're I mean, part of I, the establishment, man. Come the, on. The the risk side of it for the is is isn't so much that they have the freedom to jump for look for greener grass. Is that in the rush to go use this new tool called the transfer portal? They're all jumping into the portal, and I, I'd love to see some stats about the players that basically go into the portal and never come out again because i mean there's i was trying to i saw a stat where it was like 16 or 1700 uh basketball players in the portal right now i mean there, there's just no place for all these uh everybody to go because you know, schools are when they people leave they go okay well i gotta sign another hot recruit or whatever else you know if you're if you're a uh, four or five or a five four or five star player yeah you're you're gonna get some interest and but you know if you're uh, um, a role bit role player some of these guys just aren't gonna they're gonna be what was it the uh, Keyshawn Johnson Jr., where you're gonna, you know, you're gonna go off and never play again. What did whatever happened to him? That's a good question. I he went <laughs> he was in Arizona for a while. He might still be there, but he never, he's never shown up on a football roster. Wow, that's good. Okay, this is a one-time transfer. Yes. It's a one-time okay. transfer. It's kind of your one-time free pass. And when you think about it in the grand scheme of, you know, there's all these kids last fall that signed letters of intent in, in December and then all, for other sports all through last fall and this spring, they, unless they went uh, and made uh, a college visit when they were a freshman or sophomore or their summer before their junior year, they haven't they haven't been officially recruited by and been able to go on campus officially thanks to this pandemic so they're going into this thing sight unseen you know they've made their college decision based off of zooms and so uh you're going to go to go to these schools when they, the first time they step on campus is probably when they arrive with their arrive with their boxes of of clothes and and so oh, come on that's how america was built <laughs> I mean, look at look at britain and the irish right the whole all of ireland yeah. suffered a massive yeah. potato famine potato the famines they got, they, they this got stuff, a, we're going to america we got on the, the boat land of milk and, they, and honey got on the boat and yeah yeah true they and they were kind of stuck here because nobody would want to get back on that boat go <laughs> back <laughs> So what do you think of that, Beth? Do you think it's a good idea? I mean, is this just the way it is now? You're going to make me compliment the NCAA now after I bashed them a minute. Ago. No, I it's like okay. It. It's okay. You can, you can bash them. Come up. I could do both things. It's true. They've done a good thing. It's it, it does need to be more power in the hands of the athlete. You know, my younger sister went to school, and the school, first school she went to wasn't the right one. She was on a volleyball scholarship. And she transferred, but she went from a D1 school to a D2 school and she had to sit out a year. Well, her D2 school won the national championship that year and she got to watch and she should have been in court. So personally, and my sister, if she listens to this, would say, yes, absolutely. I picked the wrong school to start with. I didn't try to game any systems. I wasn't mad at my coach. I was at the wrong school to start off with. And I found the right school and I went there and I played and I graduated. And that's what this is for, in my opinion, biased by my sister's experience. But um, 
there should be more controls where the athlete can go and make choices for him or her that are good both athletically and educationally because they're getting an education while they're playing sports. So it should be the right fit for them and they should be able to make a choice if they don't pick the right fit to begin with. Kids make mistakes and that's okay. God, you guys are just so reasonable people. Especially you, Beth. Come on, just throw some daggers into somebody once in a while. Slit some throats. Okay, so the transfer rules in and it's permanent. And I can't remember which one. I, was it Tristan Gebbia or uh, Gebbia or yeah. one of our Patrick O'Brien, who's been to like three schools or something? Which one yeah, of those two was? Patrick O'Brien. Patrick O'Brien. He's now at, at uh, Washington after Colorado State. So that's his so third. That's his third. Uh, there, there was one kid I, that transferred from Tulsa to somewhere else. He just transferred back to, to a former Husker. I think he went from Nebraska to Tulsa. Then he went somewhere else. And now he's transferred back to Tulsa. I don't know how that, I think it was, I think it was a basketball player or whatever else. But that, that's, I mean, obviously that, that's the type of thing that, you know, gets, a little bit absurd you know you've got to you get one free pass after that it's like well make a choice buddy well yeah and so. okay the, the or, other news the other news the end of the dead period do you guys know about this no mike oh it's that recruiting crap again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is that recruiting crap. <laughs> they, they announced the end of the dead period, which apparently means that, uh, let's see, uh, <laughs> since we're all recruiting experts, uh, it means that uh, players can actually be contacted by voice, by coaches and evaluated. Because what, do, what we have for the class of 2021 they really didn't get evaluated. <coughs> they didn't get a go to. Uh, <clears throat> they didn't camps get a go to camps. Year. They didn't get a go to on-site school visits. Uh, you know, and and apparently now I think the end of this dead period thing means that you actually get to see maybe the school you're going to go attend. This and the coaches now can come go out to see these kids and vice versa. So I mean, it it's, it's a it's a good thing that it's finally opening up again, just like, just like society. But uh, unfortunately, yeah, it's the recruiting crap again. That, <laughs> but <laughs> every, every, every uh, you know, it, it's, I mean, it's gotta be tough for these, these students who are trying to figure out where they're going to go, where they're hopefully going to spend the next four or five years. And the only exposure they have is, is FaceTime and Zooms and well, yeah, that that part sucked, and uh, you know now we're going to have this thing next year where seniors. The the one thing that amazes me about the transfer portal and the number of players in it is that if you are like a senior or you are a player that was coming back to your team, your scholarship was not going to count against the maximum limit. So, I mean, if you're a senior and you're like, eh, I'm going to transfer, well, one of the Farniok brothers transferred to, yeah. was, it's not Tulsa, Western Kentucky. No, that was yeah. Bo Wilson. A smaller school. Anyway, he transferred. And you kind of look at it and you go, you know, I hope you get a scholarship because you could have had one here. If you're a guy that's just getting in the transfer portal and saying, well, I haven't graduated yet. I have to go to this other school. You might not get a scholarship. You might be asked to walk on. And I guess I look at that and I go, you know, it's uh, it's like $30,000 a year to pay for school. I, you know, maybe some people don't have that problem. I, I didn't pay for my kids schooling, by the way, just so you know that. And this is paying off in, in massive amounts of ways. And the reason why I didn't pay for their schooling was number one, I couldn't afford it. And I said, no, just like Nancy Reagan taught me back in the eighties, 
right? And uh, number two, what I did was I looked at my kids when they were smaller and I said, I'm not paying for your college. So you do <coughs> well better figure out where you're going to school and a degree in something you can graduate in that's actually going to pay for itself and get you a job. So uh, right now, my, my daughter is actually a biochemist with a very good job that is paying off her school debt massive amounts. And then the rotten son is uh, majoring in applied math. So there's no fucking poli sci majors in my family. What if, they had gotten athletic? what if they had gotten athletic scholarships? Your whole plan would have been fouled. Yeah, okay, Beth. <laughs> He still would have had to pay for it. No, if they, they would have gotten, been motivated. if they get, would have gotten athletic scholarships, it means that something horrible would have happened to all of the people who had athletic genes in their family. Because I gave them like not. Did I not mention old and slow and young and slow earlier? I think to play. I can you name a sport in which you don't have to be like fast at something? I don't know. Maybe maybe the, maybe the we need to talk about the UPS guy who. <laughs> <laughs> okay with mrs you know, johnson strange you mentioned that they all have different eye colors <laughs> all right what else do we have do we have anything else well, there's, there's the got to be something else going on. well there's the open uh, practice on uh, saturday are you going i don't know where I, I i got to take my son I, i'm I'm not going to be able to get to the spring game, so I was kind of excited to get a chance to be back in the stadium again and, and see. I don't know whether it's we're going to see anything that, you know, I, I guess I've been uh, jaded over the last 15 years now that the game, all the spring games are televised that, you know, basically it's more of an exhibition than anything. But I'm curious to see whether, uh, whether we're going to actually throw the ball more than the than five yards downfield. <laughs> you want to see Logan Smothers throw a ball. I want to see Logan Smothers or Heinrich. <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Heinrich Harburg. I'm going to have to work on that pronunciation. I mean, but I figure if I can handle it in, in Domikang Su, I can <laughs> handle Heinrich Harburg. <laughs> or Matt Masker. <laughs> Now, the one thing is, is they, there is a deadline to the transfers and it's May 1st. Yeah. So could it be that we would pick up a one-year transfer? I mean, number one, this means that Marquis Step, I think it is the running back from USC is going to be eligible right away in the fall. Yeah. Or right away. He's out this spring with an injury, but could we pick up a quarterback by fall? Do you think? We could, but the question is, 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 are there any quarterbacks in that uh, portal, you know, that we would want to bring in? Because I, although last season started to drive me, made me question this. I said, I've been thinking that our quarterback issues were, were related more to our receiver pool than anything else. You think so? That's that has been my running thing. I mean, we were throwing uh, when Mar we all thought. Remember when Martinez was a freshman, and they said, you know, okay, uh, Adrian Martinez, dark horse Heisman candidate. Right. Well, we had a NFL receiver out there, uh, Stanley Morgan Jr. And that's true. You know, and so we had we said, okay, we're going to bring in some, you know, build build that program build the receiver depth up well morgan left jd spielman was hot and cold and uh wandale we couldn't we were so busy trying to get him touches at running back that we did <laughs> we were throwing to him downfield and the the downfield passing game evaporated on us and we've been waiting now for for two years for that to come out i'm I'm still of the uh, of the opinion that uh, our quarterback problems have been just because we just don't have some receivers out there. And now I think we've, you know, I don't know, you know, Alante Brown uh, played a little bit last year, but 
and didn't really think, but you know, we were hoping Omar Manning would would do something, and he wasn't available most of the season. Uh, Xavier Betts looked good in his limited touches, but I'm not sure how much how much uh, he was able to pick up of the offense. Uh, he was whether he was ready to to pick up that much of the offense last season. And then after that, it's like, well, what else did we have out there? You know, we were so busy trying to get Wandale his X number of touches at running back that I don't think we really exploited him in that at that position. So, and we didn't really have so, any size out there. So Scott Frost lately, along with the other coaches, has been we've been hearing the same stuff we've been hearing for a while. Beth, do you follow football very much? More than I used to now that I, I'm on coordination. Now that we force you to? <laughs> I didn't watch much football at all until I married my husband, who's from Nebraska, and that's why we live here, and that's why I love Nebraska volleyball and all of the Nebraska sports, but I didn't watch much football until marrying him. <laughs> okay, so... Is that the answer you were looking for? <laughs> I guess... Yeah, are you paying attention to what's going on with the football team this spring? Have you no, listened not. to what the coaches said? Have said? I don't think so. Tell me though, and maybe I'll it'll jog my memory. I've got a Mike. Mark. Tell her. Tell her what you were talking about before we started. Uh, we're hearing the same. We, we are we're, hearing kind of. We this. hear this. I mean, we've heard the thing that you know the, that we're seeing. You know, receiver play that we haven't. Uh, you know best we've had since we've been here you know the quarterback play has been improved and you know we we hear all this good stuff and then when the season actually starts we're still kind of muddling around mucking around and we're you know we're not seeing the progress uh that we expected to to you know the 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 talk never didn't seem to materialize when it came time in the fall uh, you know, are we being snowed again? And, you know, we're getting suckered in by all these talks, you know, we're, you know, we're bigger, stronger, faster, you know, play, play making plays. And then we go out there in, you know, when we get to go down to Oklahoma, we, we have, uh, three fumbles, four interceptions and, and, uh, this is the don't drink the Kool-Aid argument. Yes. <laughs> you know, how, you know how but is the coach really, I mean, Maybe the coach is talking to us, but I think, I mean, the, the coach is talking to the players too, right? The players read those press conference releases and things like that. So part of it is psychological and building a team and building the trust and developing those players. And what else is the coach going to say? I mean, do coaches go out there and say, mm, not looking good. Okay. Don't. You, you coached. I, at this point in the season, there, there isn't a result to be had, right? He's right, but, but you, you coached at the division one level in volleyball. Yes, yes. Okay. And never did, did you I have go. To do, did, yeah, did never you have would to I talk have gone, to the press. Yeah, I wouldn't go in front of the microphone and say, "They're just, they don't look good. We're, we're not going to be very good next year. <laughs> Probably, in lots of losses. Just bring popcorn to the match. You know, it's you're going to be positive." You are working hard. You are working on. You're seeing progress in something. Now, is it enough? Like, is if is the reason that people are mad because they're not putting in enough of the work, or is the reason they're mad because coach is being positive? And he shouldn't be being positive. Coach is going to be positive, but if they're not putting in the work and they're not players the way that they should be, okay, that's a good reason to be mad as a fan. I want my coaches to develop these players from the point we brought them in as fresh to however far we can take them in this many years. If they're not putting in the work, you know, grind away. But if it's because coach is being positive, we'll see. he's going to be positive. Okay. So now that you live in Nebraska and now that you're married to a Nebraskan, how much of the, how much of the, do you understand Nebraska fans complete total de devotion to Nebraska football and you know what I mean how it all makes us insane when they're not good and yes it's it's so painful to watch that 
like they can't break away. A Nebraska fan cannot totally separate. Like there's this little distance, but you see these little strings that are still attached. And the second something draws them right back in and it's really painful to watch because it doesn't turn around that fast, right? We're not going to football shoot um we're not going to see a great season next year we might see a better season and a better season and a better season but i don't think you turn around a team from wherever we are right now in a year so well but then again you had cases like uh like pj uh oh, turning <laughs> He came from Western Michigan, which was my hometown. And now, we were upset that he left Western Michigan. <laughs> oh, is that it? <laughs> Row the boat wherever you want, PJ Fleck, but don't talk about Western Michigan anymore. Well, Minnesota actually announced today that their spring game would be May 1st. Which you know you have we have not heard anything from Minnesota football, anything at all, which is odd because uh, PJ Fleck, I mean, the guy never shuts up. Normally, we didn't really hear anything from Jim Harbaugh. This, it's like he 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 and Kevin Warren are in a basement bathroom somewhere together, which is a really bizarre thing to visualize. But I, it's <laughs> it's like. Uh, you know, these guys that are usually very vocal and weird and everything have disappeared this spring. Uh, Harbaugh right. told us that Arba, Harbaugh announced he had his spring game the day after he held it. So, <laughs> And they, they didn't allow any media, if I remember. Yeah, they, they didn't even announce it. They said, well, we had our spring game last night. That's that's just weird. That really is weird. I can understand if you're Jim Harbaugh that you don't need any more heat, but you also have to still sell your program to people. Um, I don't know. We got anything else? I was going to bring something else up, but my old man mind forgot it. While we were talking about volleyball, I didn't mention that it's in Omaha, which is awesome, and all the teams have you know gone over to the Omaha show and been going out on. Um, downtown and just been glowing about host Omaha is we all know this but it's been a big success as far as being the tournament and being the city that hosts it regardless of the NCAA stuff we talked about earlier so they're giving Omaha rave reviews yes yeah all the teams of you know talking about how their hotels have been so accommodating because when they got there they were in that 48 hour bubble where they tested and had to just sit and stay away from everybody and so they needed women's basketball they needed some workout facilities but they all had to be separate so each hotel was you know, as far as all the twitters and contacts were saying yeah this was great everything made it work for us and had all this sectioned off and so omaha for the win you know that's nice to know because i guess when when the whole thing hit about they don't get uh you know there's no broadcasters there's no uh come on locker rooms I thought, shit, this is going to, you know, reflect poorly on Omaha because you remember earlier I mentioned placate the people you can't avoid, avoid the people you can't placate. The third part of that is deflect. In other words, when you can't, when neither of those management techniques succeed and if stuff starts flying at you, you deflect as much of it as possible. And in this case, if I was the NCAA, I would have deflected. I would have blamed Omaha for as much of it as possible. So it's nice to know that, you know, I mean, Omaha, I grew up in Western Nebraska. We all kind of resented Omaha sometimes, but you kind of look at it and go, you know, the state needs stuff. They, they need the income. They need, you know, it, it helps you guys in Western Nebraska if things go well in Omaha. I know you, you don't think so out there, but it does. Maybe. It's snowing out Creighton. here. Although Creighton lost in the first round. So there they you did. go, you that, Omaha haters. Yeah, that was a surprising loss, but um it was a it was a good match. And um gosh, I'm already losing who they lost to, but they lost to Moorhead State. They were a really good team. I mean, not many people know Moorhead State, but they were good and Creighton didn't play poorly. They just didn't have their best match. And so yeah, they were well. out in the first round. 
but they were playing on Nebraska's court that they dropped in from Lincoln, so they're used to losing on on that <laughs> surface. So what do you expect? <laughs> Yeah, they brought in um, four TerraFlex floors. And so they have two from University of Nebraska. They've got the black and the red. They've got Creighton's floor there and then Omaha's floor is in there. Yeah, um, which is black and brown. So yeah. they, they did a they nice job with Warhead those. State? Yeah, they're very good. <laughs> Go back and watch it. You can stream the game. It was a good match. <laughs> we're gonna have to get it we need it we're gonna need a gif of this <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so i don't understand creighton is part of nebraska so aren't we cheering for them i'm cheering for them you'd have okay. to listen you'd have to live in omaha to understand <laughs> okay. Are, okay, when i was a when i was a kid in western nebraska okay we had this thing where, you know, the Omaha city slickers, even though it's not that big a city, it was to us. And then of all the Omaha people, it was like, well, then there's Creighton where the rich kids get to go to school. You know, and we, and I always had this, this mental block about you know, fucking rich kids in Omaha to get everything handed to them. And then they go to Creighton. Well, here's the thing with Creighton fans is, is they go, they, they, uh, they suddenly pull all their blue stuff out of their closet at Thanksgiving. They're wearing Husker red, you know, all through football season. Then they pull their, then they pull their, uh, their blue wear out of their closet and they boo Husk Nebraska for the next uh, three or four months. And then as soon as uh, Creighton loses in the first round of the NCAA tournament, uh, then they put it all back in and they put the red stuff back on for baseball season. Except this year we didn't get to beat the shit out of them in baseball. Yeah. Because of conference so. only. I, that, that's a series I really missed this year. <sighs> okay. Anything else? Yeah. I think it's we quiet. burned this thing to the... <laughs> To the ground. Okay, Mike, you're not going to the spring game. I assume Beth, you're not. Are you going to the spring game at all if you get the chance? No. 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 Well, I hope to get down to Lincoln for it because there's also a series, a baseball series against Rutgers this that weekend. And uh, I know both of you probably don't follow baseball as closely as I do, but here's a shock: Rutgers does not suck, and Rutgers has been terrible at baseball for quite a while. Uh, every year, my every year, every year, Rutgers begins their season in Miami, playing Miami and getting their asses handed to them. And of course, this year they didn't get to do that, but they do have a winning record in the Big Ten baseball right now. OK, I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Five Heart Podcast. Now I have to try to remember what the outro is, the sign off is. And I'm some worse at that than I am the intro. Even though, hmm. Uh, thanks for listening. This has been the Five Heart Podcast because five hearts are the only hearts you need. Beth? Go Big Red. Mike? So long and thanks for all the fish. <laughs> okay, thank you for listening, everybody. <laughs>